Speaking of matters spiritual, this is a little song uh, called Have a Nice Day in Hell, all you perky goddamn people. Did you ever have one of those days, you know? It's usually a Monday, but it can be any day, and it seems like a Monday. Sometimes you have one of those days consecutively and string a bunch of them together, you got a week. And you have a whole week full of days, and you got four or five of those a month, and 12 or 13 of those a year, and you multiply that by your age, and that's your life, you know? It's like a bad day. And you're minding your own business just having this bad day all your life. And you go to a phone mat and you got these negatives with pictures of your ugly relatives that you don't like, but you resemble. And, and some geek behind the counter says, and have a nice day, you know? Like, hell, I don't want to have a nice day. You have a nice day up the wrong end of your lower GI, okay? I'm going to continue to have a shitty day. It's a lot of work having a nice day sometimes. Perky people everywhere And they're all out there making sure I have my nice day to share But I don't want to have no nice day today But here comes Gregor with his smiley button grin If he gets a beat with me, I swear to God, I'll beat his head in. Beat his smiley button head in the day. Cause I've been probably by the boss all morning. I've been wielded by the weather since June. I'm just an amorous guy, I've seen my lows and my highs, but I've stood all I'll stand. I shall hurt perfect people and see. The check out girl, she's always got one more thank you than you do. Thank you! Thank you. Her eyes are glazed with the haze of perky voodoo. Burden with that little photo man guy She's making some small talk as if the weather's hot enough or cold enough for me Whatever the case of that is Ringing up my groceries over optimistically Burden with that little photo man He's gonna get him in the back seat of his Chevy. Ball his brains out by some Bruce Springsteen too. Then they'll get married someday. This problem won't go away. We must take a strong stand, sterilize perky people, and soon. Cause they're like rabbits. They surgically implanted Nancy Davis with a silicone smile. Ron Reagan soon was smitten with his coffee made to match his saccharine style. His own perky little monkey love machine. And Nancy Reagan is the mother of the perky sheep. She's so goddamn perky, you can't imagine her taking a leap. Ronnie loves a golden shower routine. Trickle down, mommy. First they protested the state of California. And then the rest of the United States fell. Then it was half a day 
is again. Pat Boone and other bad friends. Here Reagan's here, my demand. Have a nice day in a hotel from Pat. You know where Heck is? Would you like to know where Heck is? I mean, it might be important to some of you people, because Heck is this sort of lukewarm place somewhere between here and there where perky people go if they don't live up to the perky code of ethics, you know, if they let down that holy trinity of uh, gosh, jeepers, cribes, and Casper the friendly ghost, they go to Heck. They don't go there for eternity. Perky theologians say that they go there for like a good long while, but it's not eternity, and they sort of broast. I mean, and if you're not sure you're perky out there, even given the explanations I've given so far, I mean, if you ever, if you ever find yourself using phrases like, uh, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade, you know, you're, you're probably, or if you say, oops, when people run into you, yeah, you're perky. You know who you are. And for the very advanced perky people, they're already saying, he's talking about me. Yeah, <laughs> I know where you live, too. Hey, that's kind of fun. I'm feeling kind of perky. Oh, my God. It's, it's spreading everywhere. It's contagious. It's all over the world. I got perky people in Russia saying stuff like, I'm not an unpleasant day, the Gorky Sausage Factory, comrade. Stuff like that. But if you want to know how to stay out of heck, and this is important if you are a perky person, and I think that there are some out here. There always are. They follow me everywhere. This is a little worst-case scenario about... How you getting, heck? Say you're a typically American perky person sitting in your ranch-style home there watching TV. It's, it's probably something with Vanna White or Barbara Walters. I don't know. Who can tell them apart anymore? But you're sitting there watching this, and you see, you know, you got these pictures on the wall above the TV. You got one black velvet Elvis over here, and you got this Jesus Christ paint-by-number thing. And uh, you got this hole in the middle, and you're trying to figure out what the heck you're going to put there. And then you remember, oh, yeah, I am Marge gave us that. That wonderful Norman Rockwell print is a God bless our home with the, the little girl and the old man. You know the one I'm talking about. So you go out and you get your uh, True Value Ball Peen Hammer. It's autographed by Paul Harvey. It's true. And you lay back there and somewhere between the end of that hammer and the end of that nail comes the end of your thumb. And there's a violence done to it that's far above and beyond the pale of perky. And you let loose with a string of epithets straight from the gaping maws of heck, stuff like fudge, sugar. Gosh darn it, Mark, Margaret, where do you keep the the, the unguin team? Oh, stuff like that. Okay, at that point, you're pretty much broasted in heck. It's all over for you. But what about Skippy? What about Junior? Sure, he shouldn't have been down there sneaking that extra ho-ho before supper. Beans and Frank's his favorite. But he deserves the fate better than heck. And yet, he's walking out of that, that little ranch-style home all confused. All these nasty words in his head. Things he'd never heard before. And that in combination with those uh, extra wide, bell-bottom, corduroy, lime green jobs he got him last President's Day. He's catching the wrong kind of friction from those uh, corduroys, if you know what I mean. And he's, uh, yeah, you do. You got those corduroys too, don't you? Yeah. Okay. And so he's walking down the street and he's daydreaming about things he never thought about. You know, Tammy Faye Baker without her makeup and rolling around naked and cream-filled hostess products. It's just awful. It's sick. But it's real and it's happening. And as fate would have it, Skippy didn't see the irony in the fact that rolling down the hill was a truck filled with cream-filled hostess products with no brakes, no way to stop. Look out, Skippy. Skippy! Skippy! Look out, Skippy. It's too late, Skippy. You're just like that couple in the last song. You're just about a grease. And that could be the end of the song, but it's not, because as fate would have it, and as the rest of the story goes, the driver of that truck was fired for that incident, and he had to take a lower paying and less prestigious job as vice president of these United States. That's right, Dan Quayle. All due to perkiness, Dan Quayle is like a heartbeat away from the button. And if you don't think perkiness is dangerous, if you don't get out there right now and write your congressman and tell him that this thing has to stop, we have to have the sterilization and the immunization against perkiness now.
Cause I've been probably not a boss all morning I've been weathered by the weather since June I'm just an average guy, I see my lows and my highs But I've stood all a stand, I shall kill perfect people and soon Some of them perky licks, line it. Thanks to all those unoffended.